Hello everybody, it's the uh, third concert of Guitar Virtuosos 2016 and tonight we had a concert of Adriano del Sal from Italy and uh, Assad Brothers from Brazil. Actually for me it was one of the most expected concerts because we never had those performers at the Tchaikovsky Hall at our festival and of course I heard them before but uh, this hall has some special magic, so, and this magic worked out tonight, absolutely. So I, I heard, for example, Assad Brothers in different places, different halls, and they always fantastic players, but tonight there was this, some very special uh, connection between public and, uh, and those performers. So we're really happy to have them here. So we're here at the fantastic Standard Hotel and having a conversation uh, with Sergio and Dair Assad and Adriano del Sal. I was absolutely amazed uh, by this concert. Uh, I think it's, uh, there was something, something magical tonight. And uh, this is what I'm always looking going to the concert because uh, sometimes there is just, just, just concert. Mm -hmm. And sometimes some magic happens. Also, if you're in the audience or you're on the stage, right. sometimes you play and uh, it's okay, but sometimes something, something magical happens. So thank you for the magic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Pleased. So uh, we also know that you you play uh, clarinet, right? Yes. And piano. Piano a little bit. And uh, didgeridoo. Yes, didgeridoo. Didgeridoo. Yeah, he plays didgeridoo. Really? Yes. Really, really. Oh, aboriginal. Aboriginal <laughs> instrument yeah. from Australia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a clarinet was my first instrument. I played for many years in the in the Philharmonic of my town mm -hmm. in Italy. And it, it was a very, very big experience. Play together with the other guitars and also uh, with the instrument. It's totally different, the philosophy of, of our instrument. Yes, yes. The sense, you can develop the sense of legato. That with the guitar is very, very difficult. <laughs> no. Yes, we know. <laughs> yes, we heard about it. <laughs> Yes. So, but do you still play the clarinet? Do you do some chamber music or...? Uh, no, I, I don't play no. You don't play no? So next time you come here and you play the clarinet, uh, is it possible? Maybe. Yeah, <laughs> no, why not? We, we, <laughs> we make a trio. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. We, we played with, we have actually one CD with Paquito. That's a full Paquito de Rivera, it's clarinet with two guitars. Paquito de Rivera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that guy is amazing. And I also uh, made the record with uh, Gabriele Mirabassi. Mirabassi? Yeah, yeah. He's a jazz clarinet. He's a jazz clarinet. Yes. Very, very good. Italian. Very, very good. Really good. Yes. And and he, he, I remember that you've played with him. Yeah, I played in the in Umbria Festival. In Perugia. In yeah, in Perugia. Perugia. Oh, yes, yes, right. Right. Yeah. Or probably for that time you can write a concerto for two guitars and clarinet. <laughs> And so you can be the solo. And right it, wow! <laughs> don't worry. Are you that good? Adriano, that? No, don't worry. It was very little notes, very few notes for the clarinet. No, no. Maybe he wants a lot of notes. Maybe if you want just one note. One. With didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you can you can change. You can change some notes on didgeridoo and some notes on clarinet. Some notes on guitar. Well, it's going to be a fantastic oh, concerto. Oh, yeah. Like bass clarinet. Bass clarinet. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the story behind the didgeridoo? Because, uh, well, my, my father worked uh, work a lot in Australia. 
He was an immigrant in Australia. So I have a special feeling with Australia. And when I went, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, I, uh, I didn't know the, that instrument. I discovered it with the Aboriginal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I know. Is there a uh, you do festivals? <laughs> around, <laughs> this, around the world? <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> <very interesting. laughs> but, like, you, you know, it's not easy because you have to learn the a particular rhythm. Yeah, yeah, permanent breathing. Yes, it's yes. recycled, yes. like recycled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Very difficult. Yeah. Very difficult, yes. Well, yes. It's really so special. I, I, learned, I, I don't know why, but... So what is more difficult, the guitar, the ginger do, or the clarinet? I think, <laughs> my opinion, the uh, guitar. Guitar is more difficult. <laughs> yes. Maybe all instruments are difficult, you know. Yeah. Well, talking about the instruments, uh, Sergio, can, can you t tell us about that special instruments you played on, uh, on the opening concert? That's interesting because uh, a few years ago we were planning to do a, a project around our roots, meaning the Lebanese roots, because our grandfather came from uh, Lebanon to Brazil at the turning of the 19th to the 20th century. And uh, the the colony of Lebanese and Syrian was mainly uh, by men, actually, mostly. And uh, the second largest colony in Brazil of immigrants was the Italian. So it was very common to see the marriage of a Lebanese with Italian. So that was our case. So our grandfather, Lebanese, married an Italian woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, to tell the truth, we think that the music inheritance come the Lebanese side, but it's not true. He came from the Italian side. Because my grandfather, he was, he didn't care, couldn't care less for music, you know. And my grandmother actually yes. played the flute yeah. and she had to hide from him because he would not allow her to play. This Why? The story, I don't know. We don't know. Because of religious? No, I, I, we don't know. But, you know, they had a large family because you know, they had about 15 children. But among these 15 children, just one became a musician by accident, which was our father. Mm -hmm. He became a musician because he won a, a, a cavaquinho. A cavaquinho is a sort of Brazilian ukulele, right? Like yeah, like yeah, ukulele. Yeah. He won that in a rifle. So he had this instrument. He said, yes, this is what I'm going to do with this. So play a little bit. So he bought records of people that would play the instruments. And so he started to learn by ear like this. And he be became very, very good. Actually, he could play most of the repertoire of the Shoro players. That was his style of playing, like Jacob Bittencourt, like Valdir Azevedo, people, very famous people at the time in Brazil that played the style of Shoro. And music became his love, his passion, and he had music all the time in, at home. All his friends were musicians. So we, we grew up in an, an atmosphere like, you know, music, music, music. So for us, to play an instrument was part of your body. Like, it's okay, you're a person, you just pick up a guitar and just play. We thought it was like that, but of course it's not. In, in that situation, it was. So we, we started to learn the guitar because of our dad, actually, because he wanted to have people to accompany him playing shorins, right? And that's where we started. But then, okay, this is the guitar chapter. But when we were doing the, the, the project with the Lebanese roots, we had in mind to gather people from Lebanon and create a group of Lebanese immigrants somehow. And we had a, a singer, her name was Christian Karam. Uh, she's a jazz singer. Yeah, but she's really Lebanese. She's Lebanese. <laughs> she, yeah. And she is a professor in uh, Berkeley School of Jazz. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew Jimmy. Jimmy Haddad is a very known percussionist in uh, from Lebanon in the U.S. So we, we invited them first. We got uh, Christian, we got my daughter, Clarice. So we had a quintet. Then started building the repertoire for the tour. 
then I think, well, we are playing you know, guitars, piano, there's nothing to validate that idea of, except that Cristiano would sing lyrics in, yes. in Lebanese. In Lebanese. In so Lebanese. I, need something to, yeah, I need something to validate. So we take a trip to, to the Canary Islands, and I saw someone playing this instrument in a concert. It looked at cool. The, you, you have to you have to admit that this man looks really good. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw it sounded good too. I said, "Wow!" Uh, I I went backstage to talk to him. He said, "What's this instrument?" He said, "Well, it's called Suzuki. It's a hybrid instrument. It's a cross of a sas and a buzuki. That has nothing to do with the Arab world, but it it's close enough. <laughs> and it, it was for me. Kind of it was nice. for me. It was beautiful because it was a cross of two instruments." That, of countries that are arch enemies, so it's Turkey and Greece, and the symbolized peace. That was the perfect instrument for me, and uh, I just kind of try an instrument. He handed me the instrument. I could play instantaneously. Was like, I, if you give you that instrument, you can play just from scratch. You don't need to struggle. I just had to uh, when I bought one finally because I found that the, the guy who made the instruments was a French guy, so he invented this thing. And uh, I went actually to the center of France to meet this guy and buy an instrument from him. So I bought it, and um, I had to struggle a little bit with the neck because the neck is very low. <laughs> so you, the distances are very different. But eventually I got used, so we, we used the instrument in a, in a set for, for the quintet that was, we played for a couple of years, that project. And uh, we had this composition that uh, was the end of the evening, let's say, with the, five, with the quintet. So we just extended for a chamber orchestra, took off the voice because the, it was mainly singing, yeah. and we put a clarinet that has everything to do with uh, that kind of music, and a flute, and so we built the, 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 the suite. So I can actually play the, the instrument. So actually, we've been playing, so, so we're going to play again with my daughter next month. Another verse. We are going to play uh, again with orchestra in Oxford in uh, May. It's fun. We like it. Like it is. I, I, I like it as well. I was listening from the right. from the from the public. I, I well, somehow I like this uh, Arabic stuff and this uh, music influenced by by that it was right. really good. Yeah. Yeah. I was pretty impressed how he became really Arabic <laughs> doing that. <laughs> 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 the roots, but and I express with myself too because it's fun to do like the distortion, like the Michael uh, tonality. Yeah, it's fun that ooh, it's, that w it's, it's perfect for guitarists because we are all out of tune. <laughs> yeah. So that music is great. It's just wow, really if you're out of tune, it's just everything perfect. is perfect. No, oh, that note is <laughs> like that. But you speak still? Uh, no, we never. Really. No. <laughs> no, this is the way it goes. For instance, imagine a Lebanese that arrives in Brazil, marries an Italian woman. They cannot communicate in their language, so they have to learn the bridge language of Portuguese. So both massacre Portuguese really. For a while. For real. So. <laughs> no, the, the Italian managed better, I guess. But I didn't know her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very strong accents. <laughs> Now you have the big family, and uh, looks like all of them are musicians. All of you are musicians. Yeah. Is it no. right? Is it right? Is it right? No. No. Well, I think that, that, that when the way we start, because our father was always playing and having friends with guitar, that's why he, he thought it was a good idea to have the two of us play because ah, he doesn't have to look anymore for. Guitar players. Oh, I have already here, so he can. <laughs> <laughs> so our kids, of course. After us, 
there was much more music playing in the house because we never stopped playing. Yeah. <laughs> we were not stop playing. So you're playing all together, right? Yes, we start playing together and like the whole day play, every day. <laughs> but, but he means, he means the, fam the family, uh, in 2004, we, we actually put the family together, meaning we brought my daughter Clarice, who actually is a musician, uh, she's a very accomplished musician, and we, we brought Odair's daughter, who is a wonderful singer, but he, she's not a professional, but she's really skilled and she can play, yes, she can beautiful. sing, beautiful. And we brought my son, who is, he does movies. No, and he is, and our father. And, and, and the parents. Father, and the and parents. mother, that's a, yeah. a mature, both. They never played professionally. Mm -hmm. But they are great. They are so when, when we did the, the, the tour, we did the first tour in the U.S., actually they were a sensation. The parents were a sensation because, you know, it's, you could tell that they are not professional. They just walk on stage like, you know, Am I supposed to be here? But when they do play, when my father played his mandolin, my mother magic. sang. It was it's the magic. It was about. magical. So my mother was compared to Billie Holiday in the L.A. Times. So they had a <laughs> review and compared her to Billie Holiday. Well, isn't yeah. that something? So it was beautiful. For us, it was the peak of our lives, you know, just to have the whole family. Yeah, this is, yeah. sounds absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Can, can you imagine you have your father, mother, then your daughter, and your sister too? <laughs> Let's not forget our sister. <laughs> but she's there too. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah, this is no, amazing. That's fun. It was nice. Yeah. And, uh, uh, fortunately, it was recorded. One of the concerts in Brussels was recorded by, by well, his wife, and uh, we have that memory preserved there, which is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Good. And how did it did it come that uh, you became a composer? Did you study composition, or because you? I think you're now one of the most uh, popular contemporary guitar composers, most uh, play playable, uh, like most yes. most of people most of people people play plays your music. Mm -hmm. So and uh, I think your music is very uh, polyphonic. Uh, because uh, some of your music I was like di discovering, uh, it has a very difficult polyphonic structure, mm -hmm. and uh, when when I work when when I work with uh, more, uh, contemporary composers which are not guitarists, well, I always also to take your music to show how it mm -hmm. can be done on the guitar. Yeah, the thing the tricky part for instance if. If you want to write, if you want to write the way I do, which is mostly polyphonic, if you don't know the instrument, you can't, yeah. because you, you have to know what is possible, what is not possible. So most of the time when I write polyphony, I have actually, this, I can't do this, no, I can't. Uh, I have to try many times. Uh, uh, I wrote, for instance, the second one, one sonata I wrote, which is I uh, write in two staves. I knew the company that I wanted to follow because it was a ostinato thing. But how to be, build a beautiful melody on top of that ostinato because I want to keep the ostinato running. You have to test because I, I can't play that note, I have to play another one. So yeah. you change the direction of the melody you want to, but you have still to create a melody that is functional and it, it, it has a charm. But where the music come from, uh, comes from? from? From here? Or, or from here? Well, I, I, I believe that, you know, people... In, in your case. In my case. I believe that most of people, when uh, they, they're not born that way, but, you know, they have uh, an inclination to write music. I had my inclination very young because, you know, I could write melodies when I was 13 years old. I, but my first tune, let's say, I composed when I was 13. I didn't know that I could do it, but you know, it came naturally. And I wouldn't be ashamed of saying, I wrote this now. Because it was pretty, you know? For the guitar? Yeah. No, voice and guitar. Voice and yeah, guitar. That was the natural thing because that's what the Brazilians did, right? Write songs with lyrics. That's why I started that way. And uh, so I knew that I could do that. But to expand that to something else, it took many years because when I entered school um, in Rio de Janeiro, 
at the, those, the, I'm talking about the 70s, all the school was um, actually dodecaphonic, you know, serialism. And to write tonal music in those days was a crime. So uh, I felt like a fish out of the water, so I just actually stopped while I was studying in the university. I didn't write a single note. I came back to writing much later when we actually were freed from that world and we came to Europe with a year and I to, to start our career as performers. Then I realized that, okay, there's no crime in writing tonal music. So I just started putting back you know, gradually things in there. But did you study composition? Uh, not, not formally. Uh, I didn't study with a prof I had teachers. But uh, I couldn't say that I had one teacher in composition. I didn't study in the school. So, form. like, no diploma or something? I don't, like have, I don't have that. Yeah, I think yeah. he had the best teacher that's himself, his natural <laughs> gift. But I do believe that when you see all the great composers, they all start like kids. They have a lot oh, they knew how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Villa Lobos. Yes, I like everyone. You say the great ones, they start <coughs> kids. They knew how to compose a way. But and, and if, if you go to school, and you never, like myself, I, I never had this talent to compose. I was, you say, 13, I was eight years old, start playing, I never had any inspiration to write anything. So if I go to study composition, you can learn how to compose, but it's totally different. It's not coming from. <laughs> Where did that come from? I, I love this. Ah. <laughs> I, li I like the quote of Smith Brindle because it says that nobody can teach composition, actually. What you can do is teach the tools to compose. You just <coughs> <coughs> teach w the way you can deal with notes. But you can't actually teach to compose. When you have only the tools, <laughs> yeah. you, you write and it's no good. <laughs> Today that you're f this festival here is on the its 11th year. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's a big achievement for a guitar festival. We actually were very pleased to see uh, the hall filled, and there's a big and attendance. What a beautiful hall! It's mm -hmm. an amazing hall, and uh, to see the hall filled for a guitar that's uh, yes. nowadays I think it's sort of very rare. Uh, that doesn't happen that often around the world. It would happen, let's say, maybe with very, very big names. And they, they're rare today, so they don't exist anymore. <laughs> the big, big names in the guitar. So it was a pleasure just to see that happening here. Just you know, yeah, many, many years to the festival because, you know, yeah. it's you know, a great we, achievement. We know the Russian culture is very musical, fantastic. And the, the people that I just started knowing, like you, <laughs> <laughs> we just met not so long ago. Yeah. I really saw your personality, like be strong outside of the music, like being friends in a cafe. You know, so you remember what happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, wow, the Russian guy, they are that nice. I really felt like, oh, I, I need to know more about these people. That they are really uh, strong guys. And I can confirm here, you can, in Moscow, fantastic. I think I, I have to come more here. <laughs> because I, I, I really promise like it's going to happen. <laughs> I, 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 I love vodka. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> the vodka that you have here, not this vodka we have in Europe. Or in Brazil, in Brazil, you don't have the foil. It's like wine. <laughs> I discovered that. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay, <laughs> in Europe, like in 
Italy, you know this style of vodka. Yeah, you drink it, like, you put it to ice and then you sip. Like, <laughs> but it's not real vodka. It's vodka, <laughs> it's vodka with uh, apple. Oh, yeah, 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 like it's uh, for girls. It's yeah, for girls, it's for girls it's exactly. exactly. Real man drinks it. Good <laughs> like, Yeah, of course, of course. Of course. So, yes, i never been in uh, such a uh, hall, in such festival like this. So, to me, it's a very big opportunity. It's very incredible. Uh, it was a very big experience with a lot of people. I think 1,000? 500, five. <laughs> five. Yeah. You did great. Incredible. Yeah. Happy to have you have you here again. All yeah, of you, all of yeah, you. Yeah. It was really it was really amazing festival this time, and you made it. Uh, all of you and uh, also others. So thank you very much. Thank Congratulations you. on your yeah. Well, we will try to develop the festival as much as possible, just to show the show the like an example. Like they can do the same in the Carnegie Hall. I'm sure. I'm sure it's possible. But it's just someone has to start. So it meaning that they have to bring you over there, so you can make it possible. <laughs> Russian style. Let's think about it. Thanks for the class. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming.